Hello. Uh, in this video, I'll be talking about one more new control uh, which has been added to the new version of uh, ISO 27001 Information Security Management System Standard. So as per the new controls, uh, they have added uh, 11 new controls out of which 5.23, which is uh, part of organizational controls, which is about information security for use of uh, cloud services. So I'll be talking about uh, this control from the control requirement point of view, what is exactly expected uh, in the ISMS. Uh, what do you mean by cloud strategy, which is the core part of this control? Uh, how you can achieve all the uh, cloud strategy parameters in your agreement with the cloud service provider? And uh, how do you take care of the change management in terms of cloud infrastructure and cloud softwares and hardwares? And in terms of audit, uh, what all need to be checked during the audit if you are auditing this control. So I'll try to cover both the aspects, the implementation aspect as well as the auditing aspect for this uh, uh, new control of ISMS. Now, uh, as uh, companies have increased their use of cloud hosting uh, for storage, for computing, for different, different services, uh, it has also increased the risk of attacks on their cloud services. So uh, we need to think over the proactive prevention, uh, which is always preferred over the uh, remediation or mitigation of the uh, possible risks. So cloud may give organizations some level of agility, but uh, it can also open up some new challenges, some new vulnerabilities for the organization, which we have to take care of. So traditional mindset, traditional data center security models are not suitable for the cloud infrastructure and cloud services. The administrators, the network team, the IT team, they need to learn uh, new strategies uh, they need to learn new skills which are specific to cloud computing. So as part of a cloud strategy, uh, processes for acquisition, uh, uh, processes and uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the methods for use and management of the cloud operations, cloud services, and exit from cloud services, all these things need to be established in accordance with the uh, organizations, information security posture, information security requirements, and information security framework. So challenges, when we say challenges, challenges uh, basically are the gap between the theory and the practice, the documented process and the actual implementation. So it is always great to know uh, you need a cloud strategy, a cloud security strategy. But the most important question is, where do you start? What can you consider as part of your strategy? How to implement that? Okay, so all these things we are going to discuss in this video. So uh, as we have discussed that the organizations need to define and communicate uh, how, uh, how the organization want to manage the security risks which are associated with the cloud services. Uh, actually, uh, uh, in a way it can be an extension or it can be a part of the existing approach what you have defined for your ISMS uh, as a part of information security management system or uh, existing approach for how they uh, for, for how the organization manages the services which are provided by the external parties. So uh, su suppliers and vendors, there must be some kind of uh, process procedure to manage the supplier services, to evaluate the supplier services. So it can be an extension to your existing policy or procedure for external parties also. Now, it is very important to understand the implications of the shared responsibility model. So when it, when it comes to the cloud services, uh, cloud service providers, the important thing to understand is the shared, the shared responsibility model. And, and so always uh, we need to define and document uh, the, uh, the security duties. Uh, what duties will be followed of, or will be responsible for cloud service provider and what are we responsible for as a user organization. So that clear demarcation has to be there. So the responsibility for information security in the cloud is, uh, we can say a collaborative effort uh, between the cloud service provider and the user organization. So as part of the cloud strategy, the organization need to define 
few important things like all relevant information security requirements which are associated with the cloud services. So some organization may be involved into the financial transactions. So they have to take care of PCI DSS compliance. Some organizations may be uh, handling the patient related data, data, medical data. So they have to take care of HIPAA compliances. So there are some industry specific, domain specific uh, compliances. There are some government specific compliances. So all these things need to be considered uh, during uh, when you are defining the cloud strategy. You can also take care of the roles and responsibilities related to the use and the management of cloud services. As I said, uh, what are the responsibilities of cloud service provider? What are the responsibilities of user organization? It has to be defined clearly. Then which security uh, controls, which information security controls uh, will be managed by the service provider, which controls will be managed by user organization, what will, what will be the uh, kind of controls which will be shared by both of the organizations, uh, the approach for monitoring and reviewing these controls, uh, the evaluation of ongoing cloud services. So all these things need to be taken care of when you are defining the cloud strategy. One more important thing uh, from the strategy point of view is uh, uh, how to change or, uh, or or stop the use of cloud services, including the exit strategies for the cloud services. So uh, when you are entering into the agreement at that point of itself, you have to define the exit uh, path for uh, you as a user organization from that uh, with that cloud service provider. So uh, the procedures for handling information security incidents, if any incident happened, then uh, what is the incident management procedure? What are the service level agreements for handling these incidents? How the change management will, uh, will happen? Uh, how to manage the controls? How to manage the interfaces? How to manage the change in the services? Uh, or if uh, I want to migrate some of the services to another cloud, how that migration will take place? Uh, so uh, all these things are part of your cloud strategy. All these inputs will help you to define and decide your cloud strategy based on which you can decide appropriate cloud service model and cloud deployment model. So whether you want to go for public cloud, private cloud, hybrid cloud, whether you want to go for infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, or software as a service, or for that matter, anything as a service, all these things depends on your cloud strategy. Now comes the legal documentation part, which will define your cloud strategy in a documentation format, which can help you to define your expectations, your requirements from the cloud service provider. And at the same time, the service providers offerings, the specific service level terms, conditions, all these things need to be documented. Okay, so the cloud service agreement is that document which must address the uh, all these uh, parameters, all these terms and conditions at the same time, it should also address the confidentiality part, integrity part, availability part, which are the basic parameters of information security. But with the new standard, which has been released in 2022, uh, we have to take care of certain privacy related requirements also. So some PII handling requirements, which are there from the organization point of view, if your organization is a controller or the processor of the information, so depending on that, all these uh, aspects, all these terms and conditions should be part of your cloud agreement. Many times uh, what happens is because uh, I also conduct multiple audits. So many times I have seen that the cloud service provider has a predefined format of the agreement and you don't have uh, much scope to change, modify or add any specific clause or any specific requirement from your side. In such cases uh, where the cloud service agreement is predefined and it is not open for negotiation, uh, you have to identify the risks which are there because of the agreement terms and conditions. So any residual risk which need to be clearly identified need to be accepted by your management, by the management of the organization. And it has to be part of your risk assessment and risk register. Now, apart from this, there are a few important points which need to be considered. if the agreement is open for negotiation, is open for modification. Yes, we can uh, we can uh, think about some important points of, uh, as part of this agreement, like uh, the, uh, the, the processing and the storing of the organization's sensitive information. Uh, uh, if we want to be uh, done, if, if we want this to be done at some approved location, some particular country, particular region, or uh, which has to be subject to some particular jurisdiction. So that should be part of your uh, cloud service provider agreement. 
also uh, you can define if you need some dedicated support in the event of security incident, data breaches uh, in the cloud service environment. So what kind of support you need, what kind of uh, what kind of response you are expecting is has to be documented in the cloud agreement. Then the support uh, in gathering the digital evidences because cloud is everything digital. So uh, we need to have some kind of system logs, event logs, user logs, okay, some uh, some summary reports. So all those things, digital evidences, uh, if you need support in that, it has to be officially part of your agreement document. Apart from this, uh, if you if you are looking for a specific type of backup of data with some specific frequency, some configuration details about your cloud infrastructure, it has to be part of your cloud agreement. And the most important uh, about uh, cloud agreement is uh, providing and returning information, uh, such as configuration files, source code, uh, data, uh, some important uh, services, which are part of your cloud environment. Uh, so, so it has to be part of your agreement that whenever requested during the service provisioning or uh, during uh, the uh, uh, service offerings, or in case of agreement termination, all this important uh, data should be returned to you in a specific manner, and it should be uh, it should be deleted from the cloud service provider's environment. So this has to be explicitly a part of your agreement. Apart from all these things, the basic terms which are related to uptime, availability, access control terms, uh, malware controlling, monitoring, uh, protection solutions, security solutions, other relevant aspects, which are standard uh, clauses of any agreement will be part of your uh, agreement also. So these are uh, these are the inputs which you have to think over before entering into any agreement and as per your requirements, organizational requirements, all this can be part of your cloud service provider. Now, suppose you have a cloud setup and uh, you, you have some, some, some hardware, some software components in the cloud environment, and now you are using these cloud services in your operations. Now, any change which is made uh, to this cloud infrastructure or cloud environment or cloud offerings, uh, this need to be notified to your organization before making any change any major change which is impacting the customer, which is impacting your operations, all those changes need to be notified uh, by cloud service provider to the user organization. So in case of any customer impacting changes, a prior notification is a must. Uh, so any change uh, which is uh, uh, with respect to technical infrastructure, it may be a relocation uh, kind of change or reconfiguration in the, in, the, in the existing infrastructure or changes in the hardware, changes in the software, uh, which can affect or change the cloud service offerings, all these technical changes or processing of uh, or storage of the information uh, from a new geographical uh, location with a new legal jurisdiction. So this has to be notified to you prior to making that change. Okay, so this change management is very important in terms of cloud operations. Any change in the cloud infrastructure should not be done without your approval. So we have discussed the details of newly added control in the new version of ISO 27001, which was released in 2022 about the uh, information security requirements for cloud services. So that is from the implementation point of view or the control requirement point of view. So you know how to define your cloud strategy, what aspects to uh, consider and how the agreements play, play an important role in, in ensuring the information security requirements in cloud services. Now, as an auditor, if you are auditing uh, this control, then uh, you can consider a few checkpoints for effective implementation of cloud services or to check whether the uh, implementation is effective or not. So you may check uh, a few important points like uh, what is the cloud strategy of the organization? What services are offered using the cloud? What information is stored and processed in the cloud? Do the organization have any policies, procedure, uh, which are defined for cloud services? Uh, or which are defined for cloud usage uh, or usage of the cloud infrastructure, which can be led to provisioning, modification, access management, backup, retention, eraser, it can be anything. Has the organization considered all the applicable risks which are related to cloud services uh, based on what is covered in the agreement, what is not covered in the agreement, or how these risks are managed, how these risks are mitigated, is the documentation available? Uh, and also you can check about cloud business models uh, 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 like they offer multiple benefits. So when I say risk, 
you can go into details of the risk management process whether there is a there is any financial risk so financial risk can involve the uh, cost overruns impact on business uh, return on the investment or it can have some privacy related uh, risks like uh, uh, some organization sensitive data to third party disclosing that information to third party or if that information is in shared location or there can be some compliance related risks like uh, if there is a, a, any problem with uh, contractual uh, uh, requirements legal requirements regulatory obligations or if there are any security risks like access related risk confidential related risks performance uh, related risks or if there is any degradation of the services which may happen or any technical risk which can be there in the uh, in the uh, in the cloud operations like inability of the business to adapt to the dynamic technologies new technologies which are coming into the market incompatibility into the technologies uh, so all these types of risks uh, has to be identified and has to be available in your risk register with appropriate justification and mitigation and last but not the least, how do the organization monitor and measure the performance of the cloud service provider? So uh, this, this covers uh, the auditing part of this control. So I have discussed the details about information security requirements for cloud services from both the angles, from the implementation point of view, as well as uh, the auditing point of view. Okay. So uh, uh, additionally, if you want to go into more details, uh, you have multiple other standards, which I have mentioned on this slide also, like 17,788 uh, 17, and 17,789 are for the uh, uh, for the more cloud services related information. Uh, specifically, if you want to uh, uh, if you want to uh, have some more information on the cloud portability and exit strategies of the cloud operations, then uh, ISO 19,941 can give you more information. Uh, uh, more information about the information security and public cloud services, you can refer ISO 27017. For supplier relationships uh, for the cloud services are covered in ISO 27036. Uh, cloud service agreements, what should be content of the cloud service agreement is covered into ISO 19086, uh, which also talks about the security and uh, privacy related controls, which has to be part of your agreement. So more details you can see in these uh, available standards. So hope this video will be helpful for all the ISMS implementers and the auditors of the new standard.